then that which is in part will be done away with. And he goes like this, he goes, when the last apostle, which was John, John the Apostle, wrote the, la the last page of the Bible, this book is perfect. And nobody can say any different and say that it's not. He goes, so the perfect has come. He said, so then everything else has, has vanished away. Tongues and prophecies, we don't need them anymore. Because the perfect has come. I said, that would be good. I said, I, said, I see that. But uh, I said, I just have one question. I said, he goes, what's that? I said, do you study your Bible? He goes, yeah. I go, why do you study it? He goes, to acquire knowledge. I said, but right there it says that knowledge vanishes away too. <laughs> Amen. And it mentions three things. Uh, tongues, prophecy, and knowledge. And that man, uh, when the perfect is come, which is the Bible, those three vanish away. He goes, I said, you can't say two vanished away and one, and one remains. Either all three remain or all three vanish. Hello? You know, I said, so why do you study that? He goes, well, I can't explain it. I, I, I said, you're just picking and choosing what you want. I said, listen, I said, I, 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 I thank you for your offer. I said, but uh, I think I'd rather go without pay and start on my own. And thus, that's when we started Fountains of Living Water all over again. Started from ground zero, went back to uh, Corporation Commission, reorganized the whole thing. And we started it up again. All because they would not let me preach. Or I would be the uh, uh, Eloy Christian Church here in Cassegrain. Because <laughs> that was the name of the church. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? But the thing is, so the, this is the reason why I say they have a misunderstanding of the scripture. Because knowledge has not vanished away, so tongues have not vanished away, and prophecies have not vanished away. There are three stages, I need you to realize this, that there are three stages in what we call speaking in tongues. There are three stages. Uh, the highest stage in speaking in tongues is ministering in tongues. There's such a thing as ministering in tongues. This is only given to ministers that minister. Let me read that to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 uh, through 31, it says, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing, helps and administrations. Variety of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gift and yet I show you a more excellent way. So notice what he's saying. He says, he's dealing here with ministry gifts and he talks about tongues being a ministry. You know, so, so uh, this gift is, giving, is given to ministers where they, they speak, uh, they will call an individual out, they'll pray over, uh, over him in tongues and someone will give the message of what the Lord is speaking to, to that person uh, in their known language. You know, Pastor Josh and I used to flow uh, quite frequently in this. Uh, the Lord had told me to start developing Pastor Anthony uh, 
uh, in this area, and uh, we were never, never able to really hook up and be at the same spot uh, when the anointing was there. Because we, all, we didn't do it when we wanted to do it, we did it when the anointing to minister in that fashion was there. You know, uh, uh, so that's the highest level. Then there's another level, which is called diverse kinds of tongues. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11, we have the list of nine gifts of the Spirit. And it says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11, it says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministers, ministries, but the same Lord. And there are all diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation, listen to this, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Notice, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, Notice, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But the one and the same Spirit worketh all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. So I want you to I want you to see this that um, that in, 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 in this. There's, it's called divers, there are different kinds of tongues, because the person that, uh, that is going to, uh, that is going to, uh, that the Holy Spirit gives this gift to, will not just speak in one, one different tongue, but he will speak in different kinds of tongues. Uh, are you following what I'm saying? So this is a, a special gift, and it's given to as, as uh, the Spirit wills. The other one is given to ministers. This one is given, because it's a ministry gift. This one is uh, diverse kinds of tongues, and it's given to, to the individual as the Holy Spirit wills. It's not as I will, it's not as the you will, it's as the Holy Spirit wills. You know, and maybe in the future we we can go down through these nine, nine gifts, because listen, I believe these gifts are not, these nine gifts are not for the ministers, I mean they operate in them, but they're actually for the church. They're actually for you to be able to operate in them. You know, and these are special giftings that God has given you as the church, giving us as the church. You know, and I say you because uh, uh, God has gifted me as a pastor, as a minister, but you as a church, these nine gifts, and there's uh, six other gifts uh, stated in Romans, that the Holy Spirit has equipped the church to operate in, to expand the gospel. Amen? <clears throat> and the, the, the stage is uh, that I call praying in tongues this is for everybody this is, this is not for ministers only like in the ministry gift this is not uh, for special people uh, whoever the Holy Spirit chooses in the congregation to give to. This praying in tongues is for everybody. Amen. Jesus said it this way in Mark, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Amen. He's not saying this is just for, uh, this is for everybody. And, listen to the scripture. Therefore let him who speaks in tongues Pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray 
with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. So I want you to notice this, uh, and, and, and this is this is the prayer that I want to get to you as a church. You know, this is this is a. Uh, 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 I would that everybody spoke in tongues here at Fountains of Living Water. You know, and that you would do it on a constantly, on a constant basis. Amen? Amen. Because number one, when you pray in the Spirit, it, it, it ignites the atmosphere and it, and it makes uh, like it says in James, I think I, uh, I spoke on this a little bit in James, uh, uh, the first uh, when we, the first Wednesday we started, I, I talked on prayer, and I mentioned James where it says, uh, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, and the Amplified says, the prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Lord, when you pray in the Spirit, you begin to make tremendous power available. You know, uh, I, uh, I remember when I would go to the Benny Hinn Crusades, you know, uh, uh, as, as you walked in, you could sense the, 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 the arena uh, here at the Veterans uh, Coliseum, you could, you would sense the, in the arena the, the power that was in there. You know, but as you went in, it was it was very common to see people walking around praying in tongues. You know, what are they doing? They're 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 preparing the atmosphere and they're they're making tremendous power available. A good friend of mine that had COPD in the last stages, he went in at three o'clock. Service started at 7 o'clock. He's sitting there, and at 5 o'clock, he told me at 5 o'clock, he felt the power of God hit him and got instantly healed. And the service hasn't even started. How did he get healed? Tremendous power was made available. Whoo! Hallelujah! I would... That we all spoke in tongues. Why? Because when we when we pray and speak in tongues, we are making tremendous power available. Hallelujah. Listen, we're in an area, we are in an area where uh, we have hopeless, uh, uh, there's drug addiction. Wouldn't it be nice that they'd come around our, uh, our building and they could sense that tremendous power that we have made available Amen. and get set free? Hallelujah. But I want you to see this. If you notice, God has placed some in the church apostles, prophets, and the ministries. God has placed them there. And to each one is given as the Spirit wills. But on this one, it doesn't say God placed them. It doesn't say as the Spirit wills. It says, I will pray. Amen. That means if you're waiting for the Holy Ghost to come in and possess your tongue to get you to start talking, it's never going to happen. Amen. You have to will it. You have to say, I will do this. You know, I've only, uh, I, uh, uh, in, 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 in praying in tongues, I always tell people at the encounters, you know, just do what the Nike logo says. What does the Nike logo say? Just do it. Don't worry if you're going to do it right. Don't worry if you're going to do it. Don't worry about it. Get your stinking, stinking out of the way. And just do it. 
I'll tell you what's going to happen when you start doing it. It's gonna, the same thing is gonna, that happened to me is going to happen to you. When I started praying in tongues, you know, uh, without feeling that electrical shock. Amen. You know, when I started praying in tongues, uh, first thought that hit my mind is, you're making this up on your own. But I kept going. I kept pressing on. Amen. And the more I pressed on, it's not working. You're just making it up on your own. But I kept going on. And then you know that devil, he brought a thought to me that really froze me and stopped me. Because see, back then I didn't know about anything very much about grace. This was back in 1978, so uh, I'm still in the legalistic church where you can go to hell for any reason. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, and the devil just came and said, Eli, you are in danger of committing blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And you're going to lose your salvation and be lost forever. You know what I did? I stopped praying. I stopped praying. And then I would get a little uh, itch, if I could word it that way down here, that says, you need to pray in the Holy Ghost the way you had started. Uh -huh, because I don't feel anything, and if I don't feel anything, I'm going to be making it up on my own, and I'm putting, I'm putting my salvation on the line. I could lose my salvation and never be saved again. Because, you know, that's how foolish we were in our belief. You know, and I, I feel that little, no, you know, one day the Holy Ghost just said this to me, he goes, Eli, if this was not of God, why is the devil so concerned in stopping you from doing it? Why is the devil bombarding your mind with all the reasons of why you can't do it? Amen? Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Right. And I tried to think about it. Well, it can't be God telling me not to do it. He's the one that offers the gift. Amen? Amen? It can't be God telling me. And if I'm making tremendous power available, who would stand to be hurt by me making tremendous power available? God? The devil's kingdom. Amen? Are you understanding why? The, the, the devil has, has stolen a gift from us by injecting uh, 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 wrong teachings on the subject and the church has become weak because we've quit praying in the spirit. So I said, I choose to pray in the spirit. I choose to pray in the Holy Ghost. Whether I feel an unction or not, I, and, and folks, you know, I've learned to pray in the Holy Ghost. I could pray in, in, in tongues as easily as I could pray in English or Spanish. Matter of fact, sometimes it comes a lot easier to pray in the Holy Ghost than it does to pray in, 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 in my natural language. Because when I try to pray in my natural language, I gotta, I, I gotta try to pray the proper way that's gonna keep me in faith. I pray the Holy Ghost. I don't have to worry about uh, praying the proper way. The Holy Ghost is, 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 is using my tongue to pray. 
And I'm just making it available to him. And I believe that as, I, as I'm making, as I'm putting those syllables together that make no sense to nobody, you know, I'm actually talking to God and I'm actually doing something. That's my faith. It requires a decision from you. Again, don't be waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and possess your tongue. You have to say, I will. I want to touch this a little bit, but this 1 Corinthians 14, at the very beginning it says, desire, pursue love, and desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. We're pursuing love, but it's like we're not desiring the spiritual gifts. And I want my praise team to desire spiritual gifts. You say, what do you mean? The scripture says, I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. It says, I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. I saw, I witnessed this at, at Kenneth Copeland Convention Back in the 90s, I used to go to Kenneth Copeland Convention. Len Meek used to be his praise and and he still is. I mean, uh, but Len Meek used to be his praise and worship leader. Len Meek would sing two, three uh, praise songs, upbeat, but then he'd go into worship songs and he'd begin to worship. And he'd just begin to worship. You know, and, 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 and and he would get to a point where he's worshiping that instead of singing the song in English that he was singing, he'd go into singing in the spirits, singing in tongues. You know, and after, after that he would uh, 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 sing in tongues for a while, He'd come back to English. He's no longer singing the same song he started with. He's now singing the interpretation of what he sang in tongues. You know, I don't know how many of you have, have heard uh, that song. When the Spirit gets to moving. When the Spirit gets to moving. When the Spirit gets to moving. Let it move. That song was written by Keith Moore in one of uh, Papa Hagen's uh, conferences where the Spirit just came upon him and began to sing in the Holy Ghost. And then after singing in the Holy Ghost, boom, the whole band was in sync. They began to, they began to sing in the Holy Ghost. And then they began, uh, 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 when he brought that translation, he, that's the uh, uh, song that came out. And it made, it, it, it wouldn't, it made a hit in the Christian world. You know, uh, Pastor Josh, uh, I saw him at uh, at uh, uh, at, uh, at the here at, at the Pinal County Fairgrounds when uh, uh, Sister Daniels was hosting those uh, the revivals, and I saw. Uh, in one of the services, only one time I seen them do that. One of the services, they started going into playing a uh, music, and uh, and I signaled the the sound person hit record. <laughs> they didn't hit record, but they start. I mean, uh, uh, they started. Uh, the band started playing a uh, 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 music that had never been played. 
And then Pastor Josh just started singing in the Spirit. And then from the Spirit, he went to singing uh, what he was singing in the Spirit. And this, uh, 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 the church was blessed. After service, I said, did you guys get it all? Oh, is that what you were trying to tell us to do? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But listen, this is the thing. I've only seen it at Kenneth Copeland Convention, and I saw Pastor Josh beginning to tap into it. Beginning to tap into it. So we just, you think that we have to just let that gift die and go? Or do you think we could begin desiring it? That's a desire for, that I have in my heart. Where, where our praise and worship, you know, uh, 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 where our praise and worship can sing in the spirit, in sync with the, with the musicians, and then Sing with our, their understanding and give us what they sang in the Spirit. I believe that can happen. Hallelujah. Again, is this something that God's giving to special people? Or is this part of a thing that requires me wanting it and stepping out and doing it. You know, I told my wife, Judah, I said, I said, honey, I said, when you're driving to when you're driving up to up to uh, to work there in Sacaton, I, I I need you to uh, pray in tongues and and just begin to practice uh, in because the Lord told me develop her in diverse kinds of tongues. I said, just practice. Believe that what you're doing is from God, and God has gifted you on there. You know, and her, and her prayer language and tongue began to change differently, and uh, uh, we would go to India, and she would help me minister. She'd pray in tongues, and I'd bring the interpretation. And we were beginning to step into, into that Ministry of ministering to people in tongues and interpretation of tongues. Amen. Listen, these are gifts. Two of them are gifts. This stage that I'm talking about is for everybody, and it's as God will. It's, it's, a, it's as you will. My question is, will you step into it? I don't know how to do it, Pastor. I, I don't know how more simpler I can put it to you. Just start putting syllables together. Believe in your heart that the Holy Spirit is going to give you the utterance to do it. Amen. And and let go of the stinking thinking that says you're doing it wrong. That's not right. You're making it up on your own. Just do it. <laughs> the benefits. Benefits of praying in the Spirit, number one. It edifies you. In 1 Corinthians 14, 4 it says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Listen, I'm for edifying the church, but I'm for you learning how to edify yourself. Amen? I'm for edifying the church, but I'm for you Learning to edify yourself, help yourself grow, and uh, one of the things, one of the benefits is, as you pray in the Holy Spirit, you begin to edify yourself. You know, I learned this from uh, 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 Steve's uh, uh, mom, my aunt. I mean, her, her son had just passed away. People are coming all broken down, and uh, this is her oldest son, all broken down and crying. And she's comforting them, and she's the mom, and still people come.
coming to comfort her, she's having to comfort them. But every time she sends that, 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 um, that oppression of, uh, of, of uh, uh, my son is gone, I hear, I hear her. She begins to pray in the Holy Ghost. She just begins to pray. To, what is she doing? She's edifying herself. Making herself strong in praying in the Holy Ghost. So how many of you would like to edify yourself to where you're strong? Exactly. Number two, it builds your faith up. Jude 1.20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, and this is how you do it. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And what does praying in the Holy Ghost mean? Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You build your faith up. How many would like to have strong faith? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You speak mysteries to God. And listen to what I'm going to say. The mysteries, the mysteries that you that you pray are not things that are out of this world. Are things that are unknown to you. Listen, have you ever been at a job and you say, oh, I just don't know what to do here? You pray, you, you pray that way in the Holy Ghost for a little while, boom, the light comes on. And you'll know what to do. But, because I don't know, when you said I don't know what to do, that means you have to do something, you don't know how to do it, so that what you have to do is a mystery to you. Because you don't know how to handle that situation. So it's a mystery to you. So as you pray in the Holy Ghost, guess what? Your spirit catches and sends the understanding to your mind. I will pray in the spirit, and then I will pray with the understanding. understanding. In other words, I'll pray in the spirit, and then I'll get the understanding. You pray in the spirit, you pray the mystery out. You pray in the Holy and, and then your spirit grabs it and sends the understanding to your mind. I checked here. Listen. This is Paul's desire. I'm, 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 I'm going to conclude with this. This is Paul's desire. I wish you all spoke with tongues. I wish that you all spoke in tongues. But even more that you prophesied. So what's my desire? My desire is along with Paul. I wish that you all spoke in tongues. And this is Paul's instruction to the church. In chapter 14, after he gives them a big discourse on how to do everything decent and in order, he ends it up with this. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Yet the church wants to forbid it. Amen. Do not forbid to speak with tongues. Amen? Amen? Those of you watching on Facebook, as we turn off, put in a, uh, put in a little music and pray in tongues. Yeah. Those of us that are here, when we shut off, we're going to pray for a little while in tongues. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And, and none of this that I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Just do it. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word because it does not return void to us, but it does all that you have sent it out to do. In Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you and we magnify you because your spirit is right now is not, stir not only stirring up us here, and, uh, those of us that are here present, but he is stirring up those that are in their homes watching us through, through Facebook Live. Your spirit is stirring them up 
uh, that this uh, praying in tongues is a benefit for them and it is a gift from you to them in Jesus name Amen uh, keep in mind that uh, we um, uh, we do have services on Sundays and it's open to the public we'd like to see you uh, address is 518 East 2nd Street good night and God bless you